Moving on to the hurling results um, and both hurling league semi finals, starting off with, I suppose, the big one really Kilkenny 317, Limerick 115. Um, yeah, like Limerick came flying out of traps early on. Aaron Glan gets himself a goal. Limerick are one two up. It's looking like Limerick are gonna do what Limerick do. But to be fair to Kilkenny, they came roaring back. Like they outscored Limerick, I think three six to four after that, before the end of the first half. Um TJ Reid rolling back the years um with, with that third goal. Owen Cody was very impressive as well. Yeah, like what what a result and what look, it's a league semi final. You could argue maybe Limerick, you know, they're they're not really bothered about this. And maybe in the second half, you know, especially when John Coyley starts taking off, Aaron Galan starts taking off, Keane Lynch. May, maybe there's an argument that they aren't really that bothered with it, with the fact they're going for five in a row, they're going for another Munster title. But at the same time, massive win from a Kilkenny perspective. Brilliant win for Kilkenny. And I was at this game as well because of uh, the Cork and Armagh game being a double header of this. And um, when Galan, who scored, went in, as you mentioned there, yeah, it looked like Limerick were going to steamroll them early on. And then Kilkenny pinpointed a kind of a weakness in the Limerick team that was put out in the matchday programme, Sean Finn at fullback. And a few reasons for that. Number one, of it's his first game back in over a year or, or in and around that time period. So that was a huge game to get back for. And number two, he's not usually a fullback. He usually plays cornerback. So... I think it was just John Coyley maybe experimenting a small bit. It backfired a bit. He'll go for a full team now in the All Ireland series. But even Dono Cusack was making a few points on the Sunday last night. And he was right in fairness. I don't usually agree with Dono, but in this point, I kind of do. The stuff that's um, going on, the history that's in Limerick's minds, the five in a row, the fact that Declan Hannon's not playing well, the fact that Gerard Hagerty's off a bit of form, Keane Lynch was performing poorly, bit of lapses in concentration in that game as well yesterday. Like, there could be a bit of, you know, complacency maybe, could, um, keeping it to Limerick. I still have belief in them. I still think they'll win the all Ireland. I still think they'll create history. But that game was kind of a warning sign um, that what Kilkenny can do if uh, Limerick are put, put to the test. And that's the, the that's the main thing to come out of this game. And um, sure, even uh, I pinpoint as well, when old Cody got sent off, that was an opportunity for Limerick to kind of kick on and go on and win the game. They didn't do so. Um, if, the, if if anything, it was nearly the opposite. Kilkenny kind of pushed on. Then Peter Casey gets sent off and then that's it. That's it. Limerick are, are, are gone out of this game. And even the post match interview from John Coyley, he was he was very, very disappointed with it. Um, so I don't think it was a case that they weren't trying. I just think things got badly wrong for them. And he was saying that the worst thing about it was, uh, John Coyley was saying this now, the worst thing about the game was that Kilkenny won the game on their terms and it, wa- uh, and it wasn't on Limerick's terms, which was a worrying aspect for the Limerick team, more or less. So, um, so yeah, worrying defeat more more or less for Limerick and uh, a few players got marked out of the game. Donegal Dalek was brilliant from play coming into this game. Got marked out brilliantly um, for the Kilkenny uh, defenders. Cahill O'Neill was a positive bearers from wing back going up and down the field was really, really good. Um, even a few sloppy errors, I think, for one of Kilkenny's goals, Keane Lynch passes the ball across um, across the centre of uh, the pitch and then Kilkenny player intercepts us. They do small little things drag a bit of um, something out of uh, these teams, even if they are as great as Limerick are. So, yeah, it's a warning sign that Limerick can't be too complacent going into the all Ireland series and Kilkenny are there to be, you know, to be caught at. But in fairness, even look at stats and everything like that, it was a poor enough game. It was from play, it was Limerick 1-8, Kilkenny 3-7. So it was a, to be honest, the first half kind of exploded and then the second half kind of died a bit. It was kind of disappointing as a spectacle. But other than that, Kilkenny won't care. They've beaten probably one of the greatest teams we've ever seen in history with 38 shots on the board as well, which is unusual against a team like Limerick. So really good result for Kilkenny, but Limerick, a lot of the drawing boards before they face Clare on, uh, on April 21st. Was it a mistake, do you think, to start Sean Finn coming back from long uh, a long-term injury? I think it was a mistake to start him at fullback. I think it was a, a too big of a role for him. And as well as that, Declan Hannon started to get centre-back. Like I know them two guys have been the the pillars, if you like, in the Limer team and their, their drive for five quest. But those two players weren't clearly fit. And you could even see it out of the, out of the pitch, uh, even watching it. It was just, you know, both of them are outstanding. There's no doubt about that. But if you were to put, I would say, Willow Dunahoo at centre-back, or if you were to put Mike Casey at full-back, 
or somebody fit enough to start the game. Maybe Limerick would have uh, gained a bit of composure in the game because, like Sean Fein, like it's, it's unusual to see him first of all get out jumped and outplayed by TJ Reid. Like TJ Reid's an outstanding hurler, but it's just unusual in the sense because Sean Fein's such an amazing defender. You wouldn't expect to see that. But I just think it was just a fitness issue. I just think he wasn't fit enough to go into this game. And a few Limerick players were kind of off at our Galan missed freeze that he shouldn't have um, in previous seasons. Uh, Garrett Hagerty was off at Keane Lynch um, had a few stray passes that didn't go to hand. Um, there, there was a few mistakes. Tom Morrissey wasn't involved as much in the game. He was very, very quiet in Barky Cave. Uh, Peter Casey, very, very frustrating afternoon for him and kind of compounded with the sending off, which was a sending off, by the way. So, so yeah, a lot of things went wrong for Limerick. I just think it was kind of an experimental team that John Coyle put out and it kind of backfired um, in this particular game. I do think the championship is the be all and end all for Limerick, though. They have to produce good performances in the championship. And it's going to be interesting now what team they actually put out. Will they stick with Cahill O'Neill at number seven? Will they put Declan Hannan at number six despite his fitness issues? Who will they put a full back? Will they put Dan Morrissey there? Will they put Mike Casey there? Or will they even stick a, t- stick a twist with Sean Finn? I, I honestly don't know what John Coyley's thinking is. But, but he has to think of something fast, even before the Clare game in Ennis, because... Remember when Clare beat them last season and we said that this Limerick team was kind of on a low ebb and Limerick got out of jail more or less in Munster that season. But if they lose to Clare and Ennis this year, there might not be room to get back into contention after that. So Limerick have to be very careful in where they trade next. Absolutely, yeah. Like, cause I suppose what stood out for me from a from a Limerick perspective is is that short game that they're so good with. Like in terms of playing out the ball from the back, the short hand pass and, and they sort of play through the opposition press, which obviously gives them a lot of space once they sort of work it through midfield and everything else. But Kilkenny's intensity, like in terms of winning the ball back, like Paddy Deegan, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. Owen Cody was brilliant. TJ Reid was very good. Um, like as much as Kilkenny but, you know, had some great moments in attack, especially in the first half. Maybe the second half, things fizzled out. But the amount of times they won the ball back was was very, very impressive. And you very rarely ever see that happen to, to Limerick. You wouldn't know. And uh, that's credit to Kilkenny, more or less. I thought Adrian Mullen, in my, in my opinion, was absolutely superb as well. Like, not just shooting wise, but I thought... Like he's like he's a general player was absolutely brilliant. And even in um, around the full back line and the half back line as well, Killian Buckley had a very good performance for Kilkenny as well. Like even Billy Drennan coming onto the pitch, Luke Hogan uh, contributed well. You had, um, Billy Ryan even uh, contributed well as well. So yeah, Kilkenny had a very good performance all over the pitch in fairness. But then again, like I don't know, would this be a, a concern for Kilkenny? They beat Limerick, one of the greatest teams that we've ever seen, obviously. With a 52% shot accuracy, which is absolutely um, mad in its own right. They had 38 shots as well. So, obviously, there's still... A, I know Kilkenny had a very good performance in them and fair play to them. But with 3-7 play, 52% shot accuracy, there's still a lot to improve on for Kilkenny to get up to championship level. So, there's still things to work on um, going into the summer as well. And the Clare game in the league is going to be massive as well. Can they right the wrongs for the game in Ennis a few weeks ago? So, yeah, I still think there's a lot of work still for Kilkenny to do um, to get up to championship level. But yeah, on Saturday, it was really, really good signs from them and a really, really good performance. The pressure board and anything, the intensity was superb. And as well as that, the turnovers they got, I think... Did 30, 32 turnovers, Limerick at 20, 27. So that tells you all you need to know that Kilkenny were high pressing them and they were forcing Limerick into these mistakes. And even Limerick's short ball game, even in the stand watching it, it looked like they were kind of overplaying it a small bit. Don't want to take it away from Kilkenny, but like it looked like uh, Limerick, there was times to puck it long and there was times to play it short. And it seemed like Limerick were always playing it short all the time. It did work last year and it did work in previous seasons. But when it ain't working, it just ain't working. And it looked that way on Saturday. And Limerick kind of didn't change their style after that. Kilkenny put more and more pressure on them, made more and more mistakes. And that was a platform for them to go on and win the game. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing with Limerick. Like, it's normally meticulous. Like, it's just so crisp and, and perfect. And, and everything's done to an absolute T. And you just feel like one small cog in the machine and it, it you know it does open it up a little bit um 
like interesting enough seeing John Coyley's post match comments, like obviously Colin, you know, he, he said it was an embarrassing performance, which strong enough comments uh, from himself. Um, Limerick, though, still like for me, they're still the favourites. I'm still very confident they go on and, and win the All Ireland. We've seen this in the past before. We've seen them have blips um, and be able to, to overturn them. Obviously, it is a bit of a you know a heavy enough defeat, um, you know, in, in terms of the scoreline and everything else, losing by by eight points, but. Um, Limerick still the still the favourites for you. Oh yeah, undoubtedly. And we I still I, it's not just because I uh, did a bit on Limerick voice about uh, the drive for five. I just I just feel this team is inevitable in many ways, and I just think it was just a blip in the road on Saturday. And uh, I do think there's still more in them. They still have a lot of players to come back into the team. Like Dan Morrissey, for example, didn't actually play the other player. So he still has to come back. Mike Casey has to come back into the team. Sean Finn has to get his proper role in the cornerback. Like Aaron Costello doesn't usually start in the team. Like Barry Nash, will he be moved back to number four? There's a lot of, you know, if buts and maybe's about it. Daryl Dullivan didn't play obviously on Saturday either. That's another huge cog in it. So I do think Limerick still have a lot of players to come back to the team. Seamus Flanagan uh, didn't start if he was on the bench. So there's still a good few to come back into the team. And that's the main thing from a Limerick point of view. And even you could put, uh, with Gareth Donovan coming back to the team, you could put Keane Lynch at centre forward. So you could do these sorts of things as well. And even in midfield the other day, I know he has done it in previous seasons, Keane Lynch. But you could see now the other day, midfield kind of didn't suit him. I think centre forward kind of suits him more. So that that's the thing that Limerick could do in the next few weeks to uh, go for this drive for five. But they're on the edge of history, and I do think I do think they're the favourites to win it right now. But I get Don Logue's comments from League Sunday last night. There's a lot of pressure on a five in a row team. We saw Kilkenny would do the five in a row in 2010, and look what happened. So this is a huge year for Limerick as well and they've been at it for so many years for longer than for so many so many years as I mentioned and as well as that with the Munster Championship it's cutthroat and Limerick have got through it every season so it'd be interesting to see what attitude they have this season in going for this drive for five if they do it it'll be a miraculous achievement and it'd be one of the greatest achievements that we've ever talked about in Irish sport but there's still a lot, a long road to go um, down yet, but I, I'm still confident that Limerick can um, achieve the five in a row. I think they're an unreal team. They're an awesome team on their pomp. And I still believe in them. I know a lot of people would uh, question me and all that after the performance on Saturday, but maybe it was just a blip in the road. It was a league semi-final. They brush it under the carpet and they'll move on. And let's not forget as well, before we leave this game, Limerick won the league last season and they started Munster very slow. So maybe this is a blessing in disguise for them. So watch the space. I do think Limerick will improve as the season goes on. And they're, I think they could be even primed for the drive for five, but it's a huge year for them. Absolutely, yeah. Look, and Kilkenny, I'm sure, will will be in the conversation as they have been over the last few years. But yeah, Limerick are certainly still the favourites for me. Massive win for Clare, 124 uh, to Tipperary, with uh, Tipperary finishing with two goals and 13 points. Clare, obviously, seven points up at half time. Tipperary managed to pull it back to three points um in the second half and make it a little bit more of a game of it but i thought all in all clear we're we're fairly comfortable aiden mccarthy with eight points davy fitzgerald with a goal and three points was very impressive david reedy i thought was very good as well um so all in all solid performance from clear and um completely brushed Tipperary aside and a lot of people were expecting this to i suppose both people were you know people were expecting both games to be very competitive but yeah, I thought this was very comfortable from a from a clear perspective. It was just an awesome performance from a very, very good team and a team that are taking the league seriously. I taught that at the start of the season because clear what they need to gain a bit of confidence. Number one, to beat Kilkenny on a regular basis, which they have the chance to do in the league final in a few weeks' time. And number two, to win a league title to get a national trophy on the board. And Brian Lohan could kill two birds and one stone in, the, in a couple of weeks' time. So it's, it's exciting times for Clare, it really is, and they looked really, really good. They looked in dominant form against a decent enough Tipperary side without Shane O'Donnell, without Ryan Taylor, and most importantly of all, without Tony Kelly. So I think Clare, and as well as that David McInerney wasn't playing in the team, so that's another one. So I do think Clare are on the right road um, to even challenge for the All-Ireland this season. They look on the right road to even uh, challenge for the league as well. They look favourites going to the next uh, game against Kilkenny, despite Kilkenny's win. They looked awesome, Clare. Like for a while there, they had 70% shot accuracy for um, 
large parts of the game. They had 62% overall, but that was because of the last uh, few minutes wide. But Clare looked really, really good, and there's uh, no doubt about that. And uh, yeah, they look in brilliant form at the moment. As for Tipperary, like when you look at stats, actually, Clare at 40 shots, Tipperary at 35. The main difference speaks for itself to shooting. Tipperary's free taking the other day was really, really uncharacteristically poor. Um, Jason Ford missed a few. Garrow O'Connor missed both his frees. Sean Ryan came on and didn't do well either on the frees. He did uh, get a couple of points fair play to him when coming onto the pitch. But it just looked a bit off for Tipperary. And in the Limerick game as well, their free taking was unusually terrible. So if Tipperary are to challenge for getting out of Munster or getting um, even close, remotely close to an All Ireland this year, they have to improve in that department. And you would have thought that was a um, you know, shooing for Tipperary with the players that they have, Jason Ford and Garrett O'Connor in particular. So something needs to fix um, in Liam Cahan's team as well. So a lot of reasons to worry for uh, Tipperary. They got two goals to keep them in at Jane Morris in the first half, albeit David Fitzgerald got one in um, straight, more or less straight away. And then obviously with uh, Sean Hayes' goal, you thought, OK, Tipperary are coming back into it, but Claire. The brilliant team they are, the shoulder resolve, they got back into the game with, with relative ease, they won it in the end. So, so yeah, it's a good win for Clare. But for Tipperary, even look at uh, some stats now yesterday, it was really, really good sorting. 42% shot accuracy overall, 40% shot accuracy for freeze, which you would have thought would be a given for Tipperary over the last few seasons. So a lot of reasons to worry for Liam Cahill's side. Absolutely, yeah. And like, considering Clare obviously been without Tony Kelly for... Um, you know the the entirety of the league. Like the fact they're looking so good. Like, is there an argument this is the best Clare have looked since they won that All Ireland in twenty thirteen? I think there's an argument for it. Yeah, I do think because the main thing was there was no doubt about quality and there was no doubt about Clare putting it up to Limerick because they have done over the last few seasons in miraculous games. They produced one of the best monster final performances they've ever seen the man in twenty twenty two. But they still lost the game and they beat Limerick eventually last season. The main thing for them was, and as I mentioned before, number one, the national trophy, number two, Kilkenny. They beat Kilkenny in the league and they're on route to beat them again, possibly in the league final. If they can do that, I think they'll bring their confidence on a Trojan amount. They look really, really good at the moment. And not just Tony Kelly, out, Shane O'Donnell out as well, and David McInerney, and Ryan Taylor. So Clare look really, really good. And even the players coming into the team as well. Mark Rogers even went off. Aidan McCarthy came on. No worries at all. And what was the worry for Clare last season in particular? And I, I say this about them in tight-knit situation in games. That the refereeing decisions and stuff like that wasn't the problem. The problem was them shooting ridiculous whites. And they had very bad characteristics. This season, the league, they seem to brush that under the carpet now. They seem to have a free taker, whether it's Mark Rogers, whether it's Aidan McCarthy. They seem to be getting them over the bar each and every time. Like even their shooting after some freeze was 90% yesterday. That's incredible, in fairness, considering. I know it's something small, but Clare haven't achieved that over the last few seasons. So it's definitely one aspect that they can build on to go on and eventually beat Limerick and Kilkenny later in the summer. So I do think Clare are in a really good position, but th- at the same time, they have to beat Kilkenny in a few weeks' time or else they could ba- go back to the old days of uh, shooting wide unceremoniously or losing a bit of confidence or whatever. But that Kilkenny game in the league, I never thought I'd say this about a league final, but that game for Clare I think is absolutely crucial. Just to give a, a bit more confidence in knowing that they can beat Kilkenny for a second time in a row. Yeah, when's the last time Clare won the league actually? It's been a long time, isn't it? I think it's 24, 15, 16? I think it wasn't that long oh, ago. Yeah, I, think, I think there was one there, yeah, yeah, there was actually, yeah. I think it was, yeah, yeah under Davey Fitz, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. I think it was, yeah. No, look, I think it's it is huge for Clare, like especially after some of the recent defeats to Kilkenny and everything else, and in all Ireland semi finals. Like I think if they could get over the line, the amount of confidence it would give them going into going into Munster, Tony Kelly maybe to come back as you said, Shane O'Donnell maybe to come back in at some stage as well, be absolutely huge from a Clare perspective. Um, Tipperary at the same time though, like to lose by this kind of margin. Um, maybe not necessarily the margin, but the performance, as you said, like 42% accuracy. Um, There have been some question marks over Liam Cahill and Tipperary this year. You look at some of the performances and some of the games, like, oh, like, I think they've had a lot of good moments, Tipperary, this year. 
but it's hard to know if they're really kicking on under Liam Cahill in the way that we expected that they would. Yeah, it's just a weird situation for Tipperary. And uh, just for context of the clear, I just checked it on Wikipedia there. They lost one in 2016. Uh, so, so yeah, they won it pretty recently, but it will be a big game for them nonetheless against Kilkenny in a few weeks' time. But, yeah, it's 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 massive for Tipperary. I don't know what's gone on. Like, it, up until the Limerick game, at the start of the Limerick game, people were thinking, OK, Tipperary are pushing it on nicely, despite the stuff that was going on off the field with Killadang and stuff that was going on with Liam Cal and stuff like that. But then the Limerick game, they were on, they were very, very poor from shooting. And then yesterday, it got even worse. So I don't know what it was. Like, there's no question about their goal getting. Jay Morris is an absolute dynamite when uh, finding the back of the net. So is Mark Kehoe when he plays. I don't think there's a doubt that Tipperary have goals in them. They always have done. They're Tipperary. Um, they're Tipperary. They're a brilliant Tipperary side for getting goals. But the wides are getting, they're just so un- uncharacteristic. Like even Jason Ford, like even Jason Ford's shooting accuracy yesterday, I'm bringing it up now, I think it was something terrible yesterday. I think he, he got six points yesterday and he had 15 shots. So that's nine misses for Jason Ford. Yeah, That's a worry. It is a worry for Tipperary going to the championship. And even Garrett O'Connor, he had only had two shots in the game, missed both of them and looked good for you in the Sigurds and Cup, or Fitzgibbon Ch- Cup, should I say. So it's a reason to worry for Tipperary, considering, as I mentioned beforehand, the cutthroat nature of Munster. Like Cork are waiting in the wings. They seem to be getting a bit of confidence with Alan Connolly getting six goals in two games. So they'll be waiting on the wings as well um, in the next few weeks. So I do think it's a reason to worry for Tipperary. I don't think it was a disgrace whatsoever. I just think the wise were just killing them. Like 35 shots and to lose a game is absolutely... And to take 15 out of 35 shots is just... Awful for him. and Tipperary need to improve soon rather than later to go on a monster charge potentially an All Ireland char- charge. So yeah, things have to turn around fast for Liam Cahill or else. Like it, and Liam Sheedy mentioned this in League Sunday as well last night that the Tipperary folks seem to get on the manager's back very very often. If Tipperary have a poor season this year after a poor enough season last year losing the Galway in the quarter final. There'd be a lot of pressure on Liam Cahill, especially with the circumstance he came into the Tipperary job under. So, yeah, it's mm. a big year for Tipperary. It definitely is. It definitely is. All right. Who would you be backing to win the league final then between Clare and Kilkenny? I mean, it's it's a hard one to know who's the favourites, to be honest. I, I reckon Clare maybe slightly, but what, what do you reckon? I'm going to go for Clare. I, I said this from the start. I think they need a national trophy on the board and to... And have the upper hand on Kilkenny. So they can kill do parts of one stone, as I mentioned before. So I do think Clare will go on and win the final um, in this game. And uh, it'd be interesting afterwards to see what sort of season they have in the Munster Championship and the All Ireland Championship. There we go. There we go. Yeah, probably be back in Clare as well. But let us know in the comments anyone who is tuning in. Um, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Anyone who's tuned in, if you could hit the like button and subscribe. That will be uh, very much appreciated. Make sure to check out Matthew's podcast as well, the Gaelic Statsman podcast, when you get a chance. And um, yeah, let us know in the comments your thoughts on any of the games, whether it be football or hurling. And we will speak to you all in the next one.